Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this video. So in this video, we are going to see the observer design pattern, right? So the observer design pattern is a behavioral design pattern. So we saw a lot of uh, creational uh, design patterns and structural design patterns, but observer design pattern is behavioral design pattern and it is one of the most popular design patterns to be asked in interviews so yeah this is a need to know or must know design pattern for all the uh, you know aspirants now what is the observer design pattern let's understand it in a real world scenario right so uh, there is Amazon there is Flipkart right so you have installed Amazon and Flipkart on your mobile okay they also uh, have a web app and uh, they also have they can also you know send emails so what happens when some kind of promotion or some kind of a sale is going on in Amazon or Flipkart you receive something known as notifications you receive it on your mobile app you receive whenever you open the web app also you see the notification maybe like something comes up or pop up something comes and you also receive emails regarding their whatever you know their uh, promotions or their uh, whatever sale is going on now what is happening over here whenever Amazon or Flipkart has some kind of a sale it notifies all these three you know it's now just three but it can be many as well it notifies all of these three I would say clients right and uh, you get the notification simple as that so if they do not use a design pattern like an observer pattern and they try to do or try to send the notifications like say manually or individually then a lot of performance issues will come and some of the notifications may not be sent to the particular recipients so what kind of a design pattern they use or other any notification service that you see or any notification concept that you see in the uh, in the background they are using observer design pattern okay now what happens in an observer design pattern is that there is something known as a subject or observable okay this is the subject or observable and there are a lot of observers this is observer number one this is observer number two uh, and uh, dot 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 observer number n now what do these observers do they do nothing but observe now what do they get from observing the subject so whenever there is some change in the observable or in the subjects these observers get notified 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 all at once so the application need not care to whom the notification is going because uh, the observers are already absorbing or they are already registered with the observable or the subject so automatically whenever some change happens they automatically get notified so you you have to do nothing basically you just have to invoke one method which will say update it will automatically see who are the registered observers or valid observers and in this Amazon or Flipkart case it might be registered devices or registered accounts or registered email addresses right those are the observers or the registered observers in the observable or the subject so this is a very uh, basic 
cons you know thing about the observer pattern this is how it works right and if you want to compare it with some kind of a aws service because we talk a lot about cloud computing in our channel so if you are going to compare it some to some aws service then there is one service this is just known as an sns which stands for simple notification service so what happens in this case there is a topic right and there are subscribers subscriber 1 till subscriber n and they are subscribed to this topic now if you compare this to the observer design pattern then this topic is the observable and the subscribers are nothing but observers and when they subscribe it just means they register themselves so that they will receive the notification if you want a, a in depth tutorial about sns uh, you can uh, watch a video of mine it's there in my channel in the aws playlist okay so i hope this much of uh, you know examples are enough to understand how this design pattern works now let us create a simple class diagram i am going to be keeping it very simple because i don't want to complicate it with all the methods and all the stuffs let's keep it very simple and let's understand the class diagram and then just uh, go on with the coding part so uh, as i told you uh, let's list down what we need over here so we need observable or the subject whatever you call it it's fine and we need observer okay these two things are the main things that we need so let us create the observable first for example right and this will be a interface observable right and this uh, there will be a concrete observable which will be implementing that interface i'll just scroll it a little bit okay concrete observable that's it i'm not going to specify any methods or anything as of now now there will be a observer that will also be an interface over here that will also be an interface and obviously if there is a interface there will be a concrete observer i mean there can be n number of concrete observers and there can be i mean uh, observables also if you want to keep multiple you can keep so the observ uh, observers can be n number of for example for now uh so this is a concrete observer right that's it now what is the relationship between the observable and the observer see according to the examples that we just saw whenever there is in some change in the subject or observable the observers must get notified right now if there is some change in the observable how will the observable notify the observable uh, observers basically the observable should have should have observer so that the observable will be able to notify the observer so there is a has a relationship relationship between these two of the uh, interfaces or you know um, entities over here right now you can say basically mostly this is a one to many relationship because uh, um observers are there there are n number of observers and there is one observable so uh, like i said over here that amazon or flipkart is just one entity and there are multiple subscribers of that entity so this is a one to n relationship you can say right i hope that is making sense now in some cases you can also make a many to many relationship i mean multiple observables might be there and multiple uh, observers sorry observables should be multi maybe multiple and observers may be multiple okay so that can also be the case but let's not make it complicated so one to many let's keep it in that way i hope that is making sense so this is the basic class diagram that i wanted to show you now i think enough theory let us uh, get our hands dirty and uh, let us do some coding over here so 
I'm going to open up my IntelliJ uh, over here. Uh, let's just uh, close all of these windows and let's start with the coding. So I'm just going to create a new class over here. So I'm going to go to SRC and I'm going to say new, no, no, not a new class. We'll create a new package, right? And I'm going to name it as observer design pattern right now let's let's understand this thing let's create the subject or the observable interface first so i'll need a uh, observable interface and let us create the uh, observer interface now you can call the observable as subject also if you want right okay now the observer i will create a method called as a update method now let us let us take a use case and let us try to uh, create this example uh, in that use case it will be easier to understand so recently i was buying some uh, products from amul store if you want to this is not this is not a promotion but i'm just want to show you uh, amul shop right so i was buying some uh, high protein um, uh, some high protein uh, lassi from this from this uh, thing but who, who does not like protein right so i was buying this high protein uh, something so uh, that product was not in stock so when the product came in stock i received a email notification i don't they, i don't think they have an app but if the app was there they in the app also you would have received a notification so let's just assume that uh, uh, there is some product and there is some quantity of that product so whenever that uh, quantity comes into the stock uh, all the observers like the mobile observer or the email observer let's say those are the observers they will get a notification and uh, you will get notified so in the observer interface i will create one method called void update because whenever there is an update in the quantity the observable will call this update method and notify the observers that is the whole reason of keeping this update method over here so it will receive one parameter called as quantity okay now let us create the other observers uh, the actual observers so the first observable uh, observer will be mobile app observer because i think i i assume they will create the mobile app sometimes in the future and this will implement as you as you as you have guessed this will implement the observer right and i'm going to implement the methods over here update now uh now what i want to do is i'm just going to want to display a simple message over here and in this case if you have a big application you would basically publish uh, you know a pop up event to your uh, mobile application and it will come up as a notification in your phone but here we are not using any kind of android uh, concept or any um notification concept we're going to keep it simple so i'm just going to display a simple uh, print statement which will say the product is back in stock and uh, plus i would say quantity plus units okay so this is what will be shown when the um, you know the observable will uh, call this method to notify the observer now i'll create another class over here i'm going to name it as email uh, email observer because they also send email notification so i'm going to create this class i'm going to say implements uh, observer okay and i'm going to just uh, do the same thing i'm going to implement the update method and inside the update method uh, i'm i'm going to just copy paste this code over here and i'm going to just paste it over here okay 
that's it for now let's understand this whenever there is an a uh, change in the quantity uh, this method will be called and these observers will be notified simple as that now let's go back to our observable what to do over here now if you see we have to first do one thing that is register our observer it just means that the observable should know what are my observers so that the observable will be able to notify the observer simple as that if the observable doesn't know or the subject doesn't know who the are the observers then how will it publish a notification or uh, you know notify the observer simple right so we create one method over here void register observer and here we gonna accept one observer observer right simple as that next if you want to remove the observer i mean sometimes what happens in amazon or any uh, any kind of uh, application is that the person uh, you know deletes his account so once they deletes its account then the person should not receive the notification right so that's why i'm going to say void delete or remove observer right and it will accept the observer observer right simple as that and the last method is notify observer okay uh, notify of observer so basically this method if you call directly this method on the observable any kind of observable class this will not automatically notify this should automatically notify all the observers i hope that is making sense right now let us create the concrete observable a uh, new java class and i'm going to name it as amul stock uh just going to name it like that and this will implement uh observable right yes correct observable and we have to implement all the methods okay it's not showing me the prompt okay it's showing here all right this is cool now the register observer let's first implement the register observer method what should it do it should register an observer right how should it do basically so we gonna maintain the list of observer in a array list right and i'm gonna say private observer okay list of observer my bad list of observer uh Okay, this guy. Observer and observers, and I'm going to maintain one more private uh, uh, field over here. Private int quantity. Now there might be a lot of products, but let's say we are creating for a single product. Let's not complicate things right now. So register observer is a very simple uh, implementation. Basically, we're going to say observers. Observers. dot add observer so we're going to just add this guy over here and that's it and the remove observer method is also pretty simple observers dot remove uh observer right simple as that let's keep it simple if you want to add some additional checks or something you can easily add them right now uh, notify observers notify observers now in the notify observers i will have a let's say observers will create a for loop dot will use the lambda expression for each will take the observer and we're going to call the uh, update method and whatever is the current quantity we're going to just pass this over here right that should be it now uh, let's create one uh, constructor and uh, what it this constructor will do is that it will just uh, initialize the an empty array list yeah let's do that these are just basic java things uh, it's uh, pretty simple to understand new array list okay i think this sounds good 
and let us also create okay what to do what how to update the quantity um, you know this um, value I'm gonna create a simple public void update stock method uh, it will accept a quantity and now let us create a simple check right this dot quantity equals to quantity right now let's create a simple check what is the check I would say if this dot quantity is greater than zero then only I will notify the observers it's pretty simple right because it doesn't make any sense if the quantity is zero to notify the observers otherwise you can make some modifications over here so that whenever the quantity is zero you will notify the observer saying that the item is out of stock you can make some checks and do it very easily but for now if the quantity is greater than zero I'm going to notify the observers I hope that is making sense so this is all you need uh, in the uh, you know this observable concrete class you may even uh, you know you may even not write this update stock method because sometimes what happens is that this kind of logic right it remains outside of the framework they directly call the notify observers method uh, from the framework uh, framework why I'm saying because you have implemented a design pattern you can package it as a framework right uh, whatever so they, they can directly call the notify observables method outside of this framework as well you can make it public or you can keep it private if you want to use it uh, solely inside the um, you know this class I hope that is making sense so that is it uh, some more things I want to update over here is if I go to this uh, observer uh, this classes um, um what i can do over here is i can have a private uh, observable observable and i'm going to create a public uh, mobile app observer this thing and we can receive an observable and then we're going to say this dot observable equals to observable and then I would say observable dot register observer which is this class is nothing but what I'm doing is that uh, in each observer uh, concrete class I'm creating a, a field of observable and uh, we are just registering that particular class so whenever we are going to create an object of this class right this mobile app observer it will automatically get registered in the uh, observable so you don't have to ex explicitly register that in the observable by calling the register observer method but if you don't want to do this and you solely want to have a has a relationship between the observable and the observer you may remove this you can have a simple uh, you know um, default constructor but after creating the object of the observers you have to call the register observer method on the observable object and register this observer but to make things simple I have just uh, registering it as soon as you create the object of the observer okay I hope that is making sense so the same thing I'm going to do over here as well in the email observer and uh, I'm just gonna say email observer and uh, this is fine okay uh, to just differentiate between the two observers I'm just gonna uh, just keep this as email and then so that whenever you see the different print statements you will be able to differentiate right okay uh, so that is about it so let's create a client class I think we are done with all this things yes we are pretty much done I'm gonna create one client class where I'm going to invoke all of these things I'm gonna name it as client and in this client class I'll have a main method and in this main method I will 
write some code so i'm just going to first create the observable uh, you know object so the observable object over here is the amul stock which is the concrete class of the observable interface new amul stock then i'm going to create the observer classes observer mobile observer equals to new new mobile app observer uh, i'm going to pass in the object of amul stock and then observer uh, email observer equals to new email observer and i'm going to pass the amul stock over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say amul stock dot update stock and i'm going to pass the quantity as 20 and in the next call i'm going to say amul stock dot update stock uh, i'm going to pass the quantity as zero over here and if i run the code you can see that uh, automatically the notification the, the observers were notified for 20 units so the product is uh, back in stock 20 units and for the email observer also the notif it was notified that the product is back in stock 20 units for zero it didn't uh, notify because i have i have kept a check over there that if the quantity is greater than zero then only you have to do it now for uh, if you are getting confused about this particular logic that I did uh, where I was registering the observer as soon as I create the object if you don't want to do that you can simply uh, create I will create another class and show that example uh, in here I would just say um, maybe I'm gonna create a web app observer right and uh, that will be the class and it will implement implements observer right let's uh, let's have I'm just gonna directly copy the method or update method over here so to save time and here uh, nothing I will do I'll just create a public web app observer simple constructor I will create that's it so to actually this is also not required I am just <laughs> sorry so I'm just gonna go to the client over here and I'm gonna create another observer observer uh, web app web observer equals to new web app observer and here what I will do is I'm gonna say amul stock dot register observer and I'm gonna just pass in the web observer okay and in the web app observer uh, web app observer it's, it's such a tongue twister I'm not able to say it correctly that's uh, bad so you will say web app so to differentiate the web app as well and here what I will just uh, do is nothing just run the code and check if it works or not fingers crossed guys and as you can see all the observers were notified when the quantity is 20 over here so see uh, how easy it is to do all these things and uh, to use this um, you know observer pattern so it's a very uh, you know highly asked interview question so once you understand the concept you will be easily able to do this because if you read uh, you see the uh, some other books or something and try to mug up you would see that okay this is the only way of creating the observer where I will register the observable as soon as I create the object no that's not it you just have to register the observer anytime you can register because there is a already a register observer method over here so you can use this to register your observer right so you don't have to get confused in what way you feel fine in what way your application demands you have to code it in that way but at the end the observer pattern roots should remain same that you should not change right if 
by the call of one method update stock for example i need to notify all my observers then i need to notify all my observers you cannot change that behavior that's why it is a behavioral design pattern you should not change the behavior okay i hope that is making sense so yeah that was all about this particular lecture guys uh, we'll meet in the next lecture till then have a nice day take care and bye bye